Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the L298N motor driver with the Raspberry Pi Pico W in MicroPython. By the end of it, you will be able to control any motor you have in MicroPython with this device. This is a really interesting piece of hardware because it allows you to control the direction and speed of two DC motors at the same time. So it's incredibly important to learn how to use these things if you want to make robots with wheels, because with most robots with wheels, you typically want two wheels. So this is a good module to learn how to use if you are interested in robotics. It's incredibly simple to use. And in this tutorial today, I'll be showing you everything you need from the physical setup to all the components you need, some tips, and we'll be going over the code we have today in MicroPython and I'll be walking through that step by step as well and by the end of it you will be able to do exactly as I did today in this sample right here where I was able to connect to a motor and control the direction and speed and of course you can connect another motor as well and I'll be showing you how to do that. Enough being said guys I do not want to waste any of your time please be sure to like comment and subscribe before we get into today and let's talk about the physical setup and the components first before we delve into the code. Okay so first things first let's just talk about briefly the components we are using today. First thing is we are using a battery pack that holds eight 1.5 volt batteries for a total of 12 volts. So make sure you get a battery pack like this with 1.5 volt batteries. So at least eight of them, I am using rechargeable ones. You do not have to. And what's nice about this battery pack is it does provide 12 volts. A lot of other standard battery packs that come with robot kits only provide six volts. So they only hold four batteries. And typically that's not enough to actually move a robot in practice. So I did try using a six volt battery pack, but what I realized was my robot got too heavy and sometimes the motor driver did not receive enough power to actually move my robot. So I highly recommend a 12 volt battery pack. A little more expensive but it will save you some time and headache later on. So once you have that you also want to get some alligator jumper wires. Now these alligator jumper wires are really nice because one side is an alligator clip as you can see here which allows you to connect to free ends like this on the battery pack and also the ends on the motor and the other side is a jumper wire so it allows you to easily connect to other components in this case the motor driver as you can see here the jumper wire I just insert into the screw terminals of the L298N motor driver. Of course, the next component you need is the motor driver itself, which is what we're talking about today, uh, a Pico W and a power source for the Pico W. And I am using regular jumper wires to actually connect from the, the motor driver to the Pico W on a breadboard. I highly recommend using a breadboard, just makes things a lot easier, as you can see here, and more organized, especially if you are integrating other components. You can use a smaller breadboard. This one's a little overkill, so I'll link everything including the breadboard in the description down below. And finally, I am using a standard DC motor. Now these are pretty standard on the bottom right there. I believe they accept up to 12 volts. I may be mistaken, but either way, the spec is good enough for, for them to receive voltage from the battery pack from the motor driver. And of course I have a wheel attached to that DC motor. Now, of course, if you actually want to apply this to a robot, you're gonna go ahead and get another DC motor and a wheel. But today I'm just showing you how to use one. And if you learn everything in this video today, you will be able to control two at the same time, which is pretty much the point of using this driver. It does allow you to control two DC motors or motors at the same time. So that's all the components we need today. Next, let's go into the wiring diagram in a little more detail to show you the connections that are being made. Okay, just a closer up of the wiring diagram so you guys get a better idea of how to connect the components. On the left, we have the battery pack. Now I did use an eight piece battery pack. Remember that I did not use a four piece. This is just the only component I found in the fritzing program. So assume this is an eight piece battery pack. Now you can just connect it to the the 12 volt inputs of the L298N motor driver as you see there in red and ground for the ground of the battery pack. Another thing you have on the right here is the actual connection to the DC motor. So you can just connect two to the leads of the DC motor as you see there. And finally, we just take three jumper wires from the L298N to the Raspberry Pi Pico W on the breadboard. So this is just GPIO 13, 14, and 15 respectively. So just go ahead and match those colors. And what these three connections allow us to do is to be able to control the direction and also allows us to control the speed of the, the motor as it's rotating. So one thing I wanna make notes here that's really important is when you do first get this device, what you'll notice is there's a cap on this segment. And there's also another cap on this five volt segment. So we can go ahead and remove that cap and just take the bottom row. So this is the ENB pin and this allows us to control 
the pulse width modulation to the device, which actually allows us to control the speed of the DC motor. And this is really important in your robotics because a lot of the times you do not want your robot to move full speed or a lot of times you do not want to move really slow. So this allows you to control it. Otherwise, if you do keep that cap on, I believe it just rotates the motor at full speed if you do not want to use that pulse width modulation. Nonetheless, I think it's important to use that. So just go ahead and remove that, that cap. And we'll just be using the three on the right here. Now, if you want to incorporate another motor, you can just use the three on the left and you can follow along with the logic we're going to go over in the next segment in the code where it's pretty much the same thing, but you would just change some of the, the pins in the code. So really easy to incorporate another motor driver. You just use another three wires and connect them to more GPIO pins. And then you would just connect them to that motor itself in the out one and out two. So incredibly simple to wire this thing. Now, one thing also before we get into the code I want to show you is that this, this terminal is a little more tricky for beginners than regular terminals of other sensors. So you have to have a screwdriver to actually unscrew these screw terminals. And then once it's unscrewed enough, you can actually insert a jumper wire into that portion there and then tie in it again to actually hold the jumper wire in place. These are called screw terminals and they can be a little tricky for beginners. So I just wanna make notes that you actually do need a screwdriver as well to be able to use this motor driver and you will have to screw and unscrew. Some of them are more stubborn than others. I just bought a module, it's really easy to unscrew, but some of them you have to really get in there and twist that screw to get it loose. So enough being said guys, let's go into the code side of things to show you the code I'm running to actually control this DC motor with the motor driver. Okay, finally jumping into the code really quick. So I just have one MicroPython file on my Raspberry Pi Pico W and Thani. So let's quickly go over this. I'll link this down in the description below so you can go ahead and copy this code if you like. We just import some standard libraries machine to actually interact with the GPIO pins. And we're using time just to manage some, some time in that while loop. And what we're doing in this code is we're telling the Raspberry Pi Pico W which pins belong to which pin on the, on the device. So as we mentioned, IN3, pin 14, IN4, pin 15. And then the ENB pin is pin 13, and this is PWM pulse width modulation and of course we assign the frequency for pulse width modulation we're not going to get too much into that you really don't have to change this for beginner or intermediate purposes really and once you have that enabled in this code simply what we're doing is we're just running a while loop and then we're just going to move the motor forward and that is half of the the capability we have so that's half the power 50 percent pulse width modulation value so if you want to move it at 100%, just go ahead and double this. And then we're going to stop the motor, then we're going to move it backward, and then we're going to stop. And it's go just going to repeat this cycle. And within these functions, you could see that the way we do this is we, to change the direction of the motor, you have to enable one pin on high and the other on low. And that's pretty much all we're doing to change the direction. Now, if, you're, if you have two motors, you can just go ahead and attach them to other GPIO pins and build on top of this code. Really, it's the same logic. It's incredibly simple to do. So you can use two at the same time. And in the end, we just have an exception here. So if you just exit the program, it's just going to stop the motor. I believe if you do not have this, it, it will keep running because it'll keep retrieving signals as long as it's connected to the power source. So that's an important aspect of the code as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make the connection here briefly and just show you that this works. So I have my motor in front of me as you, as you see here with the wheel and I'm just connecting the two alligator jumper wires and we are just going to run this program. So let's go ahead and run this. So you see that it's moving forward and then that it's moving backward. So really simple and then it's just going to stop. So that's pretty much exactly how we program this thing in MicroPython with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Incredibly simple to do. Now, one thing I wanna make note of is if your wheels are spinning in the wrong direction as you expect them and your robot's already running, you have two wheels. One thing you could do is you could just switch, you could just flip the, the alligator clips on the DC motor itself. So just flip the connection and that'll reverse the polarity of the motor and reverse the direction as you expect it. So that's something to keep in mind as well as you can easily reverse the polarity, especially with these alligator jumper wires. Hence, it makes them really nice to use. 
So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope you got the gist of things and you were able to learn how to connect DC motors with this motor driver, with the Raspberry Pi Pico W and Python. If you learned something new or you got this working for you, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you wanna see in the next video as well. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.